Hello and welcome to module 11 IP addressing. Um, I think video number seven, if I was not mistaken, but I promise you this is the last one. All right, but it's very important. This is a fundamental in this course. You need to know about something. So by the time we're ending, we're finished with this video. You'll have everything that you need to know, everything, including questions they may ask you on a CCNA test when it comes to um, IPv4 addressing and subnetting. All right, we left off last time with the, with the class B network. So I answered the questions for you. So please verify that this is what you got. And here is the chart. So fill that in. Okay. And remember, you're typing whatever I'm going to ask you later on. And when you're done writing, um, submit that as homework. All right. So I think we're left off here, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Okay, see what you can do. Verify that these are the answers. If you have any questions, please ask me in class. And by the way, this is our topology. This is your LAN A, LAN B, LAN, I'm sorry, LAN A, LAN B, LAN C, and link A between R A and LAN R B and link and this link between R B and R C. All right. So there's your chart. All right, so. We're done with everything that you need to know about subnetting is, that's it. Just follow step by step what I told you. You'll be able to get it right. You don't have to get into the binary. Uh, by the way, there are the videos in the in the chapter in the online CCNA in Netacad. They're very good. If you watch them, uh, you'll see one way or another, we're pretty much, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you gotta be able to do this without going to Google and trying to figure this out, okay? And the reason we're doing this is because you're going to be asked questions on the CCNA test and uh, probably on an interview. IPv4 is not going away anytime soon. So most likely when you do graduate and you're on the field, you're going to support IPv4 addressing. And this is probably one of the most complicated topic that you'll go through. All right. Anyway, so here are some CCNA questions. These questions are known to be on the test. So if you can do these, uh, in addition to doing the subnetting, then you should be all set. All right, so let's start with question number one. If they asked you, you're writing the questions down, then you're going to write down how to answer them too, the answers as well. All right, so please write also these down. What are the range of valid addresses for a host belonging to this network? 10.1.160.0 slash 20 subnet. So what would you do? We want a range of addresses. Well, you could do this. The way to do it is, here we go. I'm going to slide this one thing, one slice of the. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the slash 20, convert it into decimal format from the chart, right? Find the block size. And the block size is always 256 minus, now we're doing it from the third byte. 256 minus 240 is 16. And then the first address is 10.1.160. Right, dot zero, and then the second address you write it underneath. You write the sixteen. You had the sixteen. Remember, the first IP address is the old one, and the second one is ten dot one dot. Now you got to add sixteen to the third byte. Why? Because the block size was taken, figured that from the third byte of the mask, and the reason we use the third is because the last byte was zero. I have to move over and. Take away 240 from 256 from the third byte. So 256 minus 2 is 16. And therefore, we add the 16 to the third byte of the original address to, sit, to get the second IP. So there's my two subnets. All right. These will be um, whatever, you know. And then here's your first address, dot one. You add a one to the zero. Uh, and then the last IP address, if you look down and you'll see a zero, the rule was. You see a zero, if you see a number, you subtract the two, right? But if you see nothing, you move over, subtract the one, and then dot 254. Always ends with 254. So dot one to dot 175 to 254. So the valid IP addresses for this range is 10.1.160.1, 10 10.2, 10.1.160.1, 10.2, 10.1.160.1, 10.2, 10.1.160.1. All right? All right, here's a second question. 
Given an IP address of 192.168.1.42 with this mask, 255, 255, 255, uh, 248. By the way, this is slash what? Think you can do it? 24 and four ones, slash 28. That's right. What's the mask address? Well, what is the subnet address? Well, you got to do the ending like we did on IP addressing when we did the ending, right? So 192 ended with 255 is 192, 168 with 255 is 168, 1 with 255 is 1, and we are ending 42 with 248 is 42 in binary, and 48 in binary, and when you end them, all right, whenever you see 1s, only here and here. So when, this, when you add this, it's 32 plus um eight 32 plus eight is 40. so you put it at the last byte so it's 192 168 1.40 and it is a slash 29 actually 248 is slash 29 that's right not slash 28 slash 28 is 240. right so there's your address it's easy to make a mistake so be very careful that's 29 ones not 28. all right Here's another question. Write this down. Oops. The enterprise has decided to use a network address 172.16.0.0. The network administrator needs to design a classful addressing scheme to accommodate three subnets, 30, 40, 50 hosts. When is a subnet mask? We never did, uh, by the way, classful. But the way to do classful, it's much easier than to do classless. Classless means you know, you go with the largest number of hosts, what we've been doing, and then you move on. You'll have different slash numbers, right? Classless means every network can have a different subnet mask address, different slash. For classful, all the networks have to have the same slash. So for all the network to have the same slash, you got to accommodate the largest number of hosts, and everybody gets that. So looking at 50 hosts, 50 hosts requires this slash. And what that's it, that's the slash, right? That's the answer with a subnet mask. But if I if they ask you, give me the a network address, an example of three network addresses that can accommodate at least 50 hosts, well, it can, can accommodate all of them, but we'll be wasting IP addresses for the 30, 40, right? But you know, that's what classful is we waste IP addresses, that's why classless is better. We give exactly what they need. So here's our three examples. 168, remember these, the red ones are always the, the bits that are used to create the masks because we're doing slash 26. So here's the first one. Here's the second one, dot 64, dot 128 will be for the 50 host. Each one of those, right? I'm using the first bits to create the mask. And look how many networks you can create because you got eight, 10, digits right 10 binary digits to create subnets right because you started out with slash 16 and you moved up to slash 26 so you got 10 2 to the 10 is 1024 subnets you can create so i'm just listing the first two the first three actually and each one can accommodate 62 hosts right if you look at the chart so I'm giving this to 30. So because they're all having the same slash, that means you have classful subnetting. Not recommended, of course. We don't do this ever. All right, question number four. Find the range of valid IP addresses and the broadcast address for this. Net, for this. Well, we did that already, right? So the first step is you find the network address, right? You do, the, you do, your, you do your ending. And you'll get this right and so and they want to know what is the range and the, the range of ip addresses so just do it like we did it in the chart there's my network address find the block is 23 is for slash 23 um which is what this is right and then you find the block size of two all right so you'll write the two addresses just to figure out the range of addresses so the first address is going to be dot one. And when you look underneath, you don't see anything. You have to move over, subtract the one. 
0.254. So the range of addresses is going to be 0.1 to 0.3.254, which means it's 10.16.2.1 is the first address. The last address is going to be 10.16.3.254. And what's the broadcast? Like we've been doing it before, it's 10.16.3 that you add a one to the last, dot 255. So that's your broadcast address. All right. You do not, once you do this sub, once you do the ending, you do not just put 255 at the end. That would have been a mistake, right? Because you have a slash 23. It would have been okay if it was slash 24. So you got to do this if it's something slash than slash, okay? So be very careful. You do the ending, you'll find the network address only. And then you got to do this, finding the block size to find the range of addresses, and then you'll be able to find what the broadcast. Okay, just don't do a quickie and just put a 255 at the end. That's, where, that's when they'll get you. Okay, question number five. Given a class I class C IP addresses subnet uh, subnetted with 30 subnet masks, how many valid IP addresses are there available? Well, slash 30 is this, block size is that, and then you do the same thing, right? You add the block size and you'll be able to find. There's only two addresses for slash 30. We know that already. Question number six. An administrator is working with a 192.168.40 network, which has been subnetted with slash 26. What are the range of valid IP addresses in this subnet? All right, slash 26 gives you the mask, the block size. See, it's, we're always doing the same thing. And then just add the addresses, find your slash 26s, and there's your range of IP addresses for all of them. Question number seven. What is the reason we assign an IP address to a switch, which means really we're assigning it to the virtual VLAN interface, right? You type INT VLAN 1 or INT VLAN 10, that's the management VLAN. Why do you assign an IP address to a switch? The only reason you would assign an IP address to a switch is because you are thinking of remote access. You're going to Telnet or you're going to do SSH to manage it, all right? Otherwise, if you're always going to be connected to the switch with a console port, you, are, you never need to assign it an IP address. You're always going to be next to it, right? Not assigning it to an IP address, nobody will ever be able to tell that or SSH into your switch remotely. All right, question number eight. Give me some examples of IP addresses, a private IP. This is an IP. And well, here's a private IP, 172.16.20. Remember, private IP addresses lie between 172.16, all anything that starts with one, anything that starts with 10, and it doesn't matter what the next three bytes are. Anything that starts with 172.16, all, all, and it doesn't matter what the last two bytes, all the way to 172.31. So 172.617, 172.18 is good. It's a private all the way to dot 131, 172.131. And it doesn't matter what the last three numbers are. 172.32 is no good. That's not a private. And 172.15 is also no good, right? All right, another question is, if an Ethernet port on a router was assigned this IP address, what is the maximum number of hosts allowed? So for this address, what is the maximum number of hosts? Well, slash 20. 32 minus slash 20, 20, that gives me how many host bits there are, right? 12 hosts. So to the 12, it tells me how many number of hosts I can assign. Minus 2, because we can't use the network and the broadcast address, so we end up with 4,094 hosts. All right, perfect. So that will end the subnetting and the typical questions that are asked on a CCNA test. All right, so you got everything that you need to know about IP subnetting. If for any reason you ever need to review, these are the videos that you go. Remember, chapter 11 videos for subnetting. We covered everything that you need to know in that chapter. All right, please write down everything that I told you. Well, write down everything that you've seen on the screen, right? And submit that as homework. And I'll see you in chapter 12.